Tiggs, Tom, I think we need a serious chat. Oh, I'm with you. There's been nothing over the last week or so. It's been pathetic. It's been poor. But enough about AFC Bournemouth. This is the New Year catch-up. Welcome. Happy New Year to you. But is it happy? Mm. That remains to be seen. And let's face it, Tom, there's quite a lot to talk about in the last week or so, isn't there? Yeah, it does feel like, even though we've had a bit of a break, there's a fair amount to, to catch up on. It's not been ideal, but it's gone from nothing to positive talk to now we're all a bit negative. So, yeah, we'll have to dive into it a little bit, mate. Probably need some more breaks, Tiggs, because there's another milestone that's been reached with Back in the Net, over 9,000 subscribers. Amazing. Whee! That is great. That is fantastic. That is fantastic. We've got, we're almost filling Dean Court. Mm, that's, that's right. Cool. And look, um, we have had a bit of a hiatus and we've used Christmas to prioritise friends and family whilst enjoying some festive fun and frolics. But back of the net, we recharged our batteries and we're going to hit it hard for 2023. And there is a lot to talk about. So on this show, here's what's coming up. We go over the defeat at Chelsea and once again it is the manner of the performance that's causing fans concern and not maybe the results itself. Then we've got to talk about Palace. Frankly, it was pathetic. But what went wrong? Why are we so poor and who is culpable for our poor form? We've also got to talk about the arrival of Foley, my namesake Jordan and all the other gang that they came over to the UK for Christmas bringing joy, but on the pitch, not so much at the moment. So we're going to have to discuss what we've learned over the last week from the new Bournemouth entourage. And Gary O'Neill, of course, we need to talk about him. He's new, he's inexperienced, and yes, he steadied the ship, but has the realisation of the size of the task maybe finally hit him? Now, is he out of his depth or is he the man to lead us out of this mess? We discuss it. And with the new year comes the January transfer window. Who's got to go? Who gets to stay and what type of players do we need? We're going to chew the fat over the status of the Cherry squad. But first, did you miss us? Hopefully you did, but I'm guessing you didn't miss the football, right? Because Gary O'Neill's Bournemouth, we were calamitous at Chelsea and pathetic versus Palace. And on this bumper pod, we've got a whole host of opinions and views to round off 2022 and some of the views might perhaps be a little bit unpopular now palace on new year's eve it was so bad i, I can't even begin to explain we're going to tackle that shortly but on the day after boxing day we faced chelsea in west london and here was the story of the day Curtains up near Chelsea, and we're here with Ryan Frank, <laughs> brother of Kieran. Ryan, how are you, mate? How was your flight over? Yeah, it's good. A uh, lot of sleep, which is good. A uh, bit of jet lag, but yeah, just before Christmas, good Christmas, and now the big event. Yeah, it's uh, it's West London again, uh, which worked for us last year. I think Potter is struggling as a coach to, to get a load of superstars to play with him, to play to his style and I think uh, they all think they're better than he is. Um, he's had four weeks off to work with them, maybe that will help, maybe they'll be more cohesive as a unit but hopefully uh, we might catch him on that bad run of form still, you never know. Did Father Christmas give you everything that you wanted or is that going to be reserved for today? Yeah, if he brings me three points today. Um, yeah, we'll be happy. Well, one point, I'll take one point. It's quietly confident. I yeah. think uh, a few injuries, World Cup, they haven't been able to work on things, the players at the World Cup, and are quietly confident about uh, our potential. See the lineups in a bit, but I back us in. It's rainy, it's cold, it's wet.
shocking. Yeah, so that was Chelsea then. Uh, not a great day, was it? I was feeling absolutely rough and it wasn't helped by what we saw on the pitch, Tom. Mm. Obviously, there's a chasm between the two sides. However, it was more than evident on the pitch and sometimes... It, we didn't even seem to go even toe to toe with them. When we did, we were better for it. But the first half, it, it was a tale of two halves. Yeah. But the first half in particular was was it was pretty woeful, wasn't it? No, nah, yeah. I think when you set up like that in them sort of games, as soon as you could see that first goal, you might as well rip it up. The kind of game plan, and that's that's difficult. I could see what he was trying to do um, and try and soak it up. But we just, yeah, we didn't execute it well enough. Um, it was similar to the to the cup game against Newcastle, where Chelsea maybe had. Bit bit of more quality on the on the day. I think the most frustrating thing is we've been there before against better Chelsea sides and probably worse Bournemouth sides personnel wise, and and beaten them quite comfortably when we've been a bit braver. And I think also since then they've obviously drew with Forest. I think they've won one in eight Chelsea, which was against us. Mm. So it's not like Chelsea are on the flying at the moment. They're they're not in a good place. Um, Forest had a go at them and were unlucky not to win the game and obviously got a point. So I think that makes it look a little bit worse. The fact that we kind of felt like we rolled over and were never in the game. And I think you've got to take positives from the second half. But equally, I am one of the people that don't... When people say, oh, we look better when it was 2-0. Yeah, but they haven't got to do anything. Yeah. It's easy to look better when you're 2-0 down because they haven't got to do anything. Um, and obviously, we'll come on to, to the Palace one that there were similarities in that as well. That once you're 2 down, the opposition have got... They've got it. They don't need to do anything. They just need to be safe. And if they're not conceding goals and Bournemouth... Oh, do we really look like we're going to score against Chelsea? Not in my opinion. Have we had a have we had a performance this season, Tiggs? We may have, where we've gone three slash five at the back, and it's it's been good. It seems to me that we're better when we're four at the back, but for some baffling reason, we went three at the back. One of which was the return of Lloyd Kelly, who probably deserves a few minutes talking about that performance. But um, yeah, what did you think when you saw the teams? I was quite excited to see Lloyd Kelly back, mm. to be honest. I was, Mepham was out, wasn't he? Mepham was out injured, so there, there was a reason for it. That seemed to be relatively last minute, his omission. Yeah, wasn't it? it did. It really did. Um, in terms of the formation, but, but we do this though, don't we? We do this against bigger, bigger, bigger teams, don't we? Top six, yeah. you know, that's what... And that's a Parker thing as well. Parker was doing that, yeah. to be fair. So it, it's sort of not really unexpected, but it's like so Tom said, if we don't go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, if we don't... Mm fight for every ball. If we don't, then it doesn't matter what formation you're in. You're going to get done. And we noticed straight away, didn't we, pretty early on with that formation, with that change of personnel, there was immediately a problem area on the pitch. Mm. Yeah. And you could see it. You could see it straight off. With Lloyd, Lazy side, yeah. Yeah, with Lloyd coming in, Jay-Z bombing forward. Lloyd's got a lot of work to do. Mm. And Billing's not natural at going over and kind of helping out in a defensive point of view on that left-hand side. Mm. But I also think it's, like, like Tig said, Format. Well, I think with Gary O'Neill and with Parker before him, we quite we do a lot in game as well. Change things in game. Yeah, I remember true. when we were sat together for the Everton Cup game. He was changing things all the time. Yeah. So I don't think it's predominantly on that. And I think people forget that that Forest one we were two 0 down. He bought on Fredericks and we went to five. Mm. Didn't we in the second oh, yeah, half? Yeah, yeah. And it worked. So it's not but that's because we're well, we were attacking. I think of course you, when we're weakest is when we're up against it and when teams are yeah. proactive like Chelsea were. I think it's. When you play a... Because people say it's either a five or a three. It depends how you look at it. Mm. I think the problem in this game is it was clearly a five. Mm. And sometimes you could play, like what we did against Forest, that the full-backs slash wing-backs are so far up, it's a three. So yeah. it, it does to check, check, uh, depend on how you execute that that system. But yeah, I think... At the end of the day, I don't think the players were, were quite on it. We'll never know if kind of the virus has hit a few of them. Because there was a few of them, I thought... You know, kind of like consistent players. So Lerma's a good example. I thought, well, you don't look quite at it. Yeah. You don't know whether there was... There was things like that. I think the weird one was, as you said, Sam, Mepham had to pull out last minute. Mm. And it sounds like um, he Stacey was the one that was brought in for him. So yeah. Smith was going to be wing-back yeah. and Mepham centre-back. So if Mepham's out, I'm surprised we didn't just bring Stevens in. Mm. Yeah. And just do a like-for-like like, rather than bring Stacey and then move Smith. Yeah. Um, but you, as, as I say again, you don't know if Stevens was one that was suffering a bit. So it's hard to tell with this virus thing. But yeah, on that left side, we were severely exposed. I think Jordan Zamora was quite advanced during a number of occasions. Mm. And then we were getting overrun on that side. And then Lloyd Kelly was getting pulled across. And, you know, defensively, we were just, we were just all over the place. And really, Chelsea went in 2-0 at half time. But it felt like it should have been about 3 or 4. Yeah. Yeah, and it felt like the game was done. And it shouldn't be at two, and we've just mentioned the Forest one, that you can come back. But yeah, it just felt like 
from as soon as the whistle went there, this was just going one way. It was a comfortable Chelsea win. Mm. And um, yeah, I don't think they had to do an awful lot to win that game. It was quite, yeah, as you said, quite simple moves down that side. And um, they were just creating overloads and we never really looked like we could do anything, to be honest. I can't really remember in that first half. We have a few little breaks, mm. but not really. It felt like get the ball up the Dom Solanke and hope he beats three men and see what happens. That's yeah. kind of how it felt. And the midfield three that, that we played in that, you, you say Billings, Billings not going to come back right. and he wasn't really advancing far enough forward either in that respect, you know, in terms of what we know he can do with the ball. Then you got Lerma, who was pretty much sitting, wasn't he? Yeah. And then you got Lewis Cook, who's pretty much sitting with his, you know, his lovely passing, don't get me wrong, but it just felt like we weren't going to create anything. The only way we were going to is if Dom Solanke... A bit of magic. A bit of magic. Yeah, it did feel like... I, I always felt like Lerma's, as you say, just sitting there and, and Lewis... To his credit, I get why he's, he seems to. He gets frustrated yeah. with how we're playing, and then he's just charging around yeah. everywhere. And then sometimes you lose a bit of that organisation in them areas. Um, but yeah, I think as much as I don't think Billing, for example, has been that good in the last two. I know he's picked up a knock. I do feel sometimes he's asked to do such different roles all the time. Yeah, I think he's a player that you know, sort of defensively, Adam Smith is very versatile and he can do all sorts of positions. He can go right back, left back, left wing back, yeah, centre right centre back. <clears throat> Whereas up the uh, top, it seems that Billings really only got one position. He's not that versatile. And it's always, you know, I think he's better like in front of Lewis Cook and Jefferson Lerma. Yeah. But when he gets dragged out to this left side, even when he plays like sometimes left on a 4-4-2. Yeah. And I think for the Leeds game, he was right. on the right. Yeah. I mean, he had a he had a pretty good five ten minutes in that game. Um, but if we if we went through a whole hard. list of since he's come to the club of oh. Phil Billings' best performance, they would all be when he's up there behind Dom. Yeah. They were all of them. So it is strange that it sometimes it feels like because we have to play Lewis Cook and Lerma for that safety. Yeah. In, and then he wants to play Kiefer more, so it's kind of like, but I need to play Billin. So he kind of just fills him in. It's almost not Billin's fault, but if he's not playing in that role behind Dom, then don't play him. Mm. Play, play, play Anthony, play Christie, play Dan Bella, play someone else because you're not getting the best out of Phil Billin. And I almost feel for him sometimes because I think that's not really his role. Mm. Um, certainly not a player to play off a wide area, in my opinion. Mm. But you know what? There were a few bright sparks. I, I mean, I thought the second half was very good. Jade and Anthony came on to really good effect. Yeah. He combined and dovetailed well with Jordan Zamora, which is good, which begs the question why he wasn't utilised in that position for the following game, but maybe uh, perhaps Gary O'Neill knows better than us in terms of that. I think that Senesi also mm. is growing better with every game as well, so that's you know that's also good. But And also Ryan Christie came on to relatively good effect as well when he got into some yeah, chance, relatively yeah. good mm. chances. He yeah. had that low shot that was saved very well and qu we created chances through you know Dom Solanke had a header that he probably could have done better with and on another day we could have probably skanked a draw out of that somehow but like you say if Chelsea needed to go up a gear I'm absolutely yeah, certain yeah. they could have because they had that in their locker didn't they yeah I feel like if we had had a few more glaring chances or really work hard and open and everything and both going to score any minute they'd have tweaked some things and, and kicked it up a gear I think they were quite happy with what was going on from their mm. point of view. Both creating bits, but they don't look like they're going to score. So, yeah, it's difficult to, to know if we were. But as, as you say, you never know if we nicked a goal. Who knows? Yeah. The whole game changes, doesn't it, with a goal? But, yeah, it, as I say, it was better second half. We do, you've got to give them credit for that. But as I mentioned earlier, I do think it was easier because they let us have it a little yeah. bit. But I did like the impact of, of Jane Nant in particular. I thought just because he's a bit braver. Dembele, even a little cameo at the end. It's just having players that are a little bit... More they want they want to beat a man and they yeah. you know get you off your seat a little bit more and I think that's as a fan it's, it's good to see when that happens. Social media reaction Tiggs on the way back just looking at what people were saying and even a two 0 against Chelsea on the face of it it's not a bad result but O'Neill was coming in for some stick even after that game as well. Yeah, I mean look, you can look at Chelsea's surrounding results before and after us and they've not been great, have they? They're in a, a transitional phase. Um, Potter's clearly struggling like the Chelsea mm. fans aren't happy mm. um, so you can understand that we are frustrated that it took us 45 minutes to actually come up with anything that looked like a threat and once that threat was there it wasn't a threat because the game was won by Chelsea mm -hmm. so you have to go answer the question at what point do you as a manager decide that actually what we're doing right now it, you know isn't working and we could see the defensive frailties from where we were sat really 
you know, really obviously mm. very early on. And he's got now, he's got this new guy come in, Tim Jenkins, Jenkins who's apparently is going to sit higher up in the stand so he can see the game. So Gary O'Neill must have been aware of the problem mm. and he chose not to address it. Mm. And there were different ways you, I'm sure you could have addressed it, but they worked on a plan through the week. He felt that eventually it would kind of come good, but he really didn't. It just like, you know, it's essentially just banging your head against a brick wall, trying the same thing over and over again and not really getting anywhere. Yeah. So then you think, okay, you draw a line under it. And I can understand why people are upset. And I was upset, but, uh, you know, Chelsea, as you say, you're not expecting anything yeah. great. Yeah. Next game, though, you, you've got Palace coming up. So you're thinking there'll be some changes. Yeah, absolutely. So let's relive the Palace game then. <laughs> So a Hollywood sprinkling Tom. Did you see Michael B. Jordan, your namesake? Did you see him in the flesh? Yeah, I did see him out of a, out of a window for at the start. Um, Bill Foley. Yeah, seen them all, and then obviously on the pitch a little bit. So no, nice to see him. It was a. Uh, I mean, because was it Leicester that Bill Foley? Yes, just came it was. Yeah, and the weather. And we you know won what? that, and I thought, oh, it's going to be a good mm. thing. But, what I'm really surprised mm. about is that he 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 bought a house in mm. wherever it was. I'm assuming Camford Cliffs or Sandbanks yeah. on the back of our two-one win against Leicester, but the, but the weather was awful that week. Like, I'm not sure he's seen the sun in Bournemouth ever before. Was the weather bad that Leicester game? It was I can't awful. Remember. It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was dreadful, it was grey, it was overcast, and then once mm. again, he's at Dean Court, and mm. look, I wanted it to be a 100% record for mm. Bill Foley. Wasn't to be, but a little bit of stardust sprinkled <laughs> over the whole pre-match proceedings, and we'll talk about Bill Foley and what he envisages for the whole experience at Dean Court, but... Mm. Explain to me what like, what do we have, Tom? Uh, we have a bit of fire coming out of boxes. What are they call them things? Like pyro, pyro, boxes, pyro or whatever. boxes yeah. And did we have that for the Villa game, the first Prem game? Did, I feel like yeah. we did. Yeah. So that was. And then yeah, I walked into Viva Las Vegas, and I thought, I tell you what, I can't wait for the European tour. This yeah. is great. Um, yeah, I think it was. How would you describe that? It was like a montage it was video. A ve- it was a very good, well, well put together video montage on our little screens, though. Which yeah. Is, you know, it's just like, which is a bit of a shame. And, and, and you can understand like what he's trying to recreate, yeah. but you're never going to recreate whatever he's doing in Las Vegas at Dean Court, is, are you? you know, it's just, just not going to happen. Plus the fact we're quite cynical. Like, yeah. Unfortunately, we, we are, are football yeah. fans are. Like, we're going to sit there and go, yeah. I mean, we all remember, uh, I say hot, you say radio. Do you remember that? Yeah, I oh, did. Yeah. 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 Do you remember that? Was that half time? Oh, that was I can't remember if it was half time or the game, but it's this kind of thing that we don't really kind of pick up on very easily. So he's got to try and change. He's trying to imprint his culture upon yeah. us, which is going to take some time. But yeah, no, I thought it was a beautiful, really well put together video. Yeah. Yeah. Had like the Rocky, um, uh, Rocky Three yeah. one, you know, either Tiger was it or was it the other one? I don't know. Anyway, had like loads of little clips from our promotions and, mm. and things like that over the last, you know, X amount of years. Um, so that was brilliant. I like that they made sure, still kept Nonny before the game. Yeah. Um, yeah, they did it half time as well, I think. Yeah. But yeah, they still got, you know, they didn't like remove any of that. So you still had, had all that going, which was nice. So yeah, it was a, it was a good mix. I think it was it was a bit. And as me and you were saying, what we takes that, as you briefly mentioned there, if it was in a big arena, it would probably look really yeah. cool. It's yeah. just because it's it's our place, and and Bill knows that. So, but no, it was it was fine. It was a it was a laugh, and I thought right, it's ready to smash up Palace. So yeah, we had the Las Vegas influence. We we spanned the roulette wheel, but we ended up with craps. That's a that's a that's a that's a joke. Is it craps as a card game? Is it? Is, is it? it in, yeah. Have you not heard craps? of that? Craps. I never have. Well, older people will know what I'm talking about there, but, but it was pretty crap. And that, you yeah, know what, we, we sort of um, try to use the uh, words using the thesaurus, perhaps a bit more descriptive, but it, it was it was a crap performance. Talk me through the formation, Tom. I, I wasn't sure whether it was going to be four at the back or five at, at, at the start. Yeah, it was because obviously Meppen was back, but he was on the bench. So I kind of, yeah, that always, always makes you wonder. But it looked like it was going to be a four, didn't it? And, uh, yeah. The only thing I, I feel is that now Kelly's obviously back. We, we were just saying then how Sanessi's kind of find his feet. And now he's moved to the right side. He's, <laughs> he's, he's massively left-footed. Um, but it looked like it was going to be, yeah, him and, him and Lloyd with um, Smithy and Jay-Z. And then I assumed, 
Well, Jay Z and Anthony would be down that left side again. Well, you'd think that, which, yeah. as as you mentioned, and we all did that Chelsea game that looked yeah. looked great. And but then it's difficult to work out because you go, well, does that mean Billings off the right? It was hard to work out. But as we as we started the game, we realised that Anthony was actually on the right side, yeah. and it was Billing kind of on that left with Jay Z, which I couldn't get me around at all. Um, they went as I expected them to go. I know they had a few suspensions, but Palace went as I expected. So if I expected it, then you know the, I'm yeah. sure the club, they didn't have any surprises really. Um, two ex-cherries at fullbacks, one at Klein and Ward. Um, so yeah, they went as I expected. We Yeah, it surprised me a little bit. And I kind of thought after the first period, I will change that quite quickly, but we didn't. I can't get my head around Anthony and Zamora, both being on the pitch and not being able to link up together. Yeah, I, I don't really... Especially I, as they showed it so well in the second half at Chelsea. Yeah, my, I was trying to think because you... It's easy to just go, well, that was a load of rubbish. So I was trying to think, but there must be a, you know, Gary Neal wants to win the football match. Mm. So there must be a reason. And all I could think when I was trying to dive into it was he didn't want Billing on the same side as Zaha mm. because he knows that Billing. And I just thought, did he think, I'll put Anthony over there because he's a little bit more willing to run backwards mm. and Zaha's a threat. Yeah. yeah. That was all I could think was, does he want a little bit more protection on that side and because plus of Zaha? When, when Billing does play that more advanced role that he he does do very well, what he does do is work in a nice triangle, albeit Jake mm. Nancy's not on that side, but Jordan Zamora, him yeah. and Jake Nancy work well together. Maybe on the left side, he just thinks he naturally yeah. drifts out that side. Maybe he'll be Maybe. adept, but it, you know, it didn't work, did it? And weirdly, you know, I mean, arguably some of our best football was pre the Palace goal. Um, yeah, yeah, we were getting but that. even despite that, it it was it was poor. It mm. was really poor. Like the distribution was poor, mm. slow tempo. Uh, you, like you were telling me about the crowd, you know, actually counting up every time that certain defenders had the ball because they wanted them to play out quickly. But when we did, yeah, the distribution was terrible. And let's face it, as restarts go against Crystal Palace at home. Oh, yeah. It's not particularly good, is it? And it always results oh, in a 2-0. And look, yeah. um, the, you know, they came with a plan. They were obviously wounded after their loss at Fulham and they executed it really well. The conditions, of course, were, mm. weren't easy, but I think they adapted to those conditions a lot better than we did because we were pl- trying to play it through the lines, whereas they were a little bit more direct but yeah. more successful as a result. Yeah, they were. I think um, I'd, I don't want to be too dismissive of like... O'Neill and different different managers but I think it showed a manager that, that in Vieira who we were linked with before that I felt as much as we were bad they'd had a few they were been a bit of a bad run they hadn't had a shot on target in their last two and he looked at Bournemouth they obviously said <coughs> after the game that they worked on set pieces and you felt like as much as we weren't very good their game plan worked to perfection because as much as we weren't any good if you don't have many chances and the other team win 2-0 away from home they've done something right and I felt that they, yeah, they nullified us in every position and, as you said, went a bit more direct and were quite clever in the way they approached it, um, with a few players out as well. But, yeah, it was just, it was dull from the off. Yeah. But until the goal, I thought, it's not very good, but there's nothing really in the game um, and we should grow into this. And I think we'll come on to it. I do think we're talking about all these different formations and players and I do think at the moment it's not his fault, but because we're trying to get Kiefer Moore in and you can't get rid of Slanky... Yeah it's make, making us have loads of square pegs and round holes yeah. Yeah. because we're trying to get Kiefer in and sometimes at home do I think, is he better as a plan B maybe? Uh, yeah. Because it forced us to go, di- like just, just, oh no, what do we do? Just lump it at yeah. Kiefer. Well, we're not seeing the best of him, are we? No. By any means, in, in the way that we're playing now. So I, I remember when, when we were only taking him off the bench and I was calling out for him to be given a, a bit mm. more of a chance and it sort of worked. It did work yeah, no, it, for did a little it. bit, but it's it's not working again now. So you've got to make that change. Surely to have Kiefer being effective, you need players to be getting out wide and yeah, getting balls, balls in the in. box. Yeah. Take a look at the average formations. Mm. For we're so narrow, so we're going from yeah. top to bottom yeah. here. And look how narrow we are. We're wide at the back, but that midfield is so congested. No one's out there wide, so it, that effectively makes Kiefer more redundant. In it a does. way, yeah, it does. And the, the worrying thing about that is, you think, okay, if that's happening, then when the ball's going up to Kiefer, we're obviously getting on the second balls then. But yeah. we weren't. We get the, Kiefer wanted, I don't know the actual stats, but he won a few headers as he always does. But then they're just clearing it yeah. because he's winning it to no one. And you think, why? Are, why is there like Dom and Billing not like right close to him for when he when he wins the the flick ons? But yeah, it was um, as you say, we, you're gonna have to get balls in the box if you're gonna play Kiefer, and we. As you said, Tiggs, in the sense that it's worked before, we done that against Tottenham, didn't we? When yeah. we went two and up, Kiefer got both, didn't we? And we, and it was because we were going a bit more direct and and to to Kiefer, and we were going to his strengths, and yeah, we weren't. And almost if you play in that way, he is redundant, as you say. 
talk to me about defending corners, Tiggs, because oh. there, there was a stat before the game that Bournemouth have conceded the most goals from corners in the Premier League. We're, before the game, we were on nine. After the game, we were on 11. And after the game, Gary O'Neill came out and said, and I know I'm a little bit ahead of, ahead of the curve here a little bit, but he said it was disgusting. And it was, because that is what he says that they work on every week. Every yeah. week they've been working on it because they know it's a weakness. Mm. And then what did Crystal Palace say after the game? Yeah, they said that they, I think it was, his, I think he might have said it was goalkeeping coach Vieira, but he said one of his coaches had identified that as a weakness, um, hence why they'd done a few different bits from, mm. from set pieces. So yeah, credit to them, they looked at us and they took advantage. But yeah, really odd, especially when the player that's scoring ahead at IU with that first goal, he's not a beast in the air. It, that's where it's even more frustrating. But I think even when we were on that unbeaten run under O'Neill, Every goal for a while that we conceded was a set piece. I remember Diop, um, was it a, a Fulham with a header? Yeah, it was, yeah. Um, who was the lad that Bolly for yeah, Forrest, Bolly, header yeah. from a corner. Um, there, was a, there was a few that were, were all set pieces. And yeah, it's, it's a bit worrying. I do think it's a mentality thing sometimes. Is once you've conceded from set pieces a lot, yeah. it's in your end. Every corner, all the players are a bit... But I just don't understand the kind of zonal I don't and, get and it. Do you think that led to the naivety with the second goal that we conceded? Because it was almost like, okay, let's not make this mistake again. Let's pack the box yes. and forget like, the man mm. on the edge of the box, yeah. Eze. It, it, was, it was an easy goal in the end. I was listening to John Williams after the game. And he comes out with some pearls of wisdom every now and again, <laughs> doesn't he? And uh, I was listening to the radio when I got back to my car. And he was saying that statistically zonal marking is better. Yeah, you know, like every that. every club that you look at statistically, that that is a better way mm. at set pieces to mark. But for us, it's not working, is it? It's just not working. No. <laughs> so you just got to turn around and say, do you know what? We haven't got the players to do. Yeah. This is my opinion. Yeah. We haven't got the players to do this. Yeah. Kiefer, get on him. He's a big lump. You're a big lump. You know, just just yeah. do it right because it's not working like this. There were times before. I don't know if you two remember back in like say like the old Driscoll days where yeah. we had a very small team. Yeah, uh, height, you know, physically. And so when that happens, I think, okay, I get Zola a bit more. Because if you just go man-to-man, they're not going to win the header. Yeah. But we've got Kiefer Moore, Jefferson Lerma, Lloyd Kelly, Phil Marcos Bill. Sanessi, Phil Bill. Not great in the air, but he is yeah, tall. Yeah. But these players are good in the air. Yeah. So I would back any of them up against Jordan Ayew. For, yeah. You know, just, just, yeah, 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 yeah. And I quite like, I've always liked man-to-man in the sense that, because it's, you're responsible then. Yeah. And if, they, if your player scores the header, there's no, it's your fault. No getting away from and you don't want to be the man that, whereas what I think Zonal does sometimes is it go, everyone can blame each other. Yeah. Well, he's run through your zone, yeah, but now he's in your zone. And it's, yeah. And, and yeah. when you add to that, right, later on in the game, okay, we carry on using that system, later on in the game, there is no out ball. Yeah. Like, later on in the game, there was no one to go out to. Yeah. All the players were coming back as part of this zonal system. So I don't understand what the advantages of it are really in, no. in that respect for us. No, and there's, there's loads of different ways of, of doing the zone where a lot of people have, you know, kind of people in front of the post to stop yeah. it if, you know, people don't beat the first man. But we, I was looking at our setup and Billing just goes to the back, yeah. goes to the back and just stands there. Yeah. Well, it's never going to go to him. He just stood there. Yeah. I, I just don't, it's, it's odd, it's odd. And I think you don't want to go too much into it, but we've conceded a hell of a lot. Yeah. So it's got to be looked at now. It's got to be looked at. And I think it must be difficult if you're working on a certain thing as, as a coach, if you're working on a certain thing and you just say, no, we're not doing that anymore, it's, you kind of think, what have we been working on? But there gets to a point where I think Gary and the coach team need to come in and go, right, what we're doing from set pieces is not working for you, bunch of players. Let's alter it and let's work on changing it, uh, maybe. Um, it'll be interesting. I'm, I'm really interested in that Man U game, like when there's that corner. Yeah. And just see. Oh dear. Let's yeah. see. Yeah. It felt to me like there were no partnerships all over the pitch. That's that's mm. what been one of the things that's worked so successfully for us throughout the season. But like uh, Lewis Cook seemed to be nowhere near Lerma. Yeah. Of course, Jane Anthony and Zamura were kept apart. Um, yeah, Moore and Solanke weren't really close to each other at all. Um, and... You know, going back to Kiefer Moore, you're like usually we use him as a target man. You know, just to put the ball forward, he can hold it up or whatever. Um, you know, the one time we did get some luck with a long ball was where I think it went to Solanke, and I think yeah. he got intercepted by Guayhi or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah. And but you know, we weren't mixing up, and we were trying to play through the lines, mm. and it was really, it was really slow. And Crystal Palace were, you know, you know they were packing out the midfield, and I think that's why we came narrow to try to, you know, you know, like to overrun them and try to win the ball back, but. It just didn't work, and the conditions mm. made it all that more difficult. So changes were made, mm. but the changes that, that I saw in the second half were literally shove an attacking player on. It, it felt like that. It yeah. felt that naive. 
Yeah. It fell out at the end. I think the first one, uh, Dembele, was before half time, wasn't it? He came off a bit. It was, yeah. And that was forced now. It looks like he had a hip injury. Mm. He did go down for a bit, Billin. Um, I think everyone thought that could just be a, a tactical change because, you know, it would make sense to do that change, but it looks like that was forced. So if Bill and Ander got injured, would he have made that change? Maybe not. I do think Dembele was needed in the sense that we're clearly missing Marcus Tavernier just to get us up the pitch sometimes and someone to to actually run with the ball and just, yeah, just get us all up and not make it keep coming back. So, and I thought Dembele, as he's always done since he's been at the club, has a good cameo, comes on, tries to make things happen. Um, but yeah, the, the rest of the changes later on in the game, as you mentioned, Sam, I think Rothwell come on kind of off the left, not really sure. Jamal Lowe was virtually in centre midfield. Don't really know why he come on. But yeah, it was... Oh, Christie come on at the end as well, didn't he? Um, But yeah, it was kind of just just chuck a few more attacking players on. And I think even though Neil, as much as the fans were as well, kind of thought nothing's going our way here. Let's just put some... And let's just hope we get some bodies there and nick something. And then once it's 2-1, you never know. But it, it wasn't to be. But yeah, it just... It didn't feel like there was any real plan. And... Go back to what you were saying, Sam, about the the lack of partnerships and stuff as well. I think I mentioned earlier about Sinesi then moving to the right. Well, he's probably never been with Smith, for example, on that side. I don't think that works. And partnerships are quite key. Um, And yeah, I I didn't think we'd be going into the season thinking, oh, we miss Mepham and Tavernier. Well, that's it. A lot of players, I think, just didn't see themselves. I think, you know, Jeff Lerma's not not really been on it. And and there's been a few, but Lloyd Kelly... um, we, I wouldn't say we rushed him back because we were sort of wondering whether he was going to play in a mm. in a cherry shirt again. However, it feels like we're almost shoehorning him in, into the side sometimes for the sake of it. Obviously, we know that Mepham wasn't available for the Chelsea game, but he was for Palace. But I struggle with Lloyd sometimes just because the lack of tempo, the mm-hmm. distribution sometimes is, is quite lazy. I think the reason he's in there is because of his pace and... You, he did produce a couple of challenges where he backtracked and he sort of rescued Senesi at times. He did a nice sliding challenge to concede a corner, but otherwise they'd have got a shot away. Um, but sometimes I feel like with him, do you think the weight of having the captaincy yeah. is almost too much for him? Because he is still young. And mm. I notice quite often, even after he's made a pass, he's always you know trying to point to where he thinks it should go next. He's He's doing all this orchestration, but to the detriment of his own game, I think, at times. Yeah, possibly. I, I I was quite surprised when we first gave him the captaincy, in all honesty. I think we all were. Mm. There were other characters within that squad yeah, agree. Uh, that probably you would have thought would be you know higher up the line. But, you know, um, we wanted to make a change. There, that was a, that was a clear sort of, well, it was Scott Parker, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. He just clearly wanted to draw a line. This is my era. This is my captain. Um, yeah, maybe it is too much for him. Maybe it is too much for him. But then, it, do you know what? That shouldn't matter too much because I don't think with the players that we've got, with our Lewis Cook, we've got, we got uh, Smithy, mm. those are leaders too. Mm. So it shouldn't all be on him anyway and he shouldn't feel like it's all on him. Yeah. No, I think, it's, I think it's definitely worth pointing out that I, I, I don't know if you agree, but I think that Lloyd's best kind of form in a Bournemouth shirt was when he had Gary Cahill next agreed. to him. Yeah, um, agreed. And he yeah, would have, regardless of who's wearing the yeah. armband, Kale would have had that experience yeah. with. And I've and said that a few times. We he did. was all but wearing the armband when he got yes. it was, really. And um, he looked a lot better. And then when Nat Phillips, who didn't do a bad job, but when he had to come in, you thought, well, Kelly doesn't quite look as, no. you know. And I, I hate just, just kind of saying I don't, you know, because you have them players that you just don't kind of warm to, don't think of, as you don't see what other people maybe see. And I, I really struggle with Lloyd. I think after, when he first came back at Chelsea, you've got to kind of be a bit like, he's going to be a bit rusty. I just, I do think if he didn't have pace, he'd be in League One. I, I don't see if he just gets himself out of trouble because he's quick. But I don't really, I don't really see what he he gets the ball and he slows everyone down yeah. because he takes six seven touches before he passes it. I don't. Yeah, it's a it's a weird one. I, I do think we look better with with Mepham and Celeste. I don't really. I think he's. I, I do starting to think that he's very overrated. And is he just a, a good solid left back? Actually, I'm not. I'm not sure. Well, this is the thing. I mean, this is, is this this like the, the how thing? Because you know Nathan Ake, mm. left back, turned him into a centre half. Yeah. Right, Tyrone Mings, Mings yeah. left back, turned him into a centre half. Yeah. Maybe this was his next one, Lloyd Kelly. But mm. I don't. We haven't got Eddie Howe anymore. We haven't got no. his coaching ability. Good we, point with Mings as well. Because you remember we went to Villa and he got the captaincy and it was too much for him and they yeah, took it off him. Now he's getting a bit better. Yeah. It's um, yeah, there are similarities there. But that's, yeah, it's a good point. He's 
Yeah, I, I definitely try. Like I say, when he first came back, you thought he's been out for a period, and he has still been out for a period, even in in this game. He's going to be a bit rusty, and but it's also yeah worth pointing out that he has had to fill in at left back. I think uh, would get used to at left back quite a lot yeah, as well. Did, yeah. Still, but yeah, it's if your captain, we're saying, needs someone experienced next to him, you think mm, should he really be the captain then? But but then I, I don't think you'd probably say well he'd probably be better with Mepham but then like, I think Sanessi's done a lot better than Lloyd Kelly's well I think we might see a, th- a th- three yeah, of them right. together I think Sanessi would be quite good in the middle actually as well because yeah. he comes out and reads the play quite well yeah. Uh, but yeah it'll be as I say Lloyd might you know, get into the swing of things again and, and end up improving but he was the one that was frustrating me the most I've got to be honest because I just felt like we needed a bit more intensity and we needed to up the tempo and he was the one slowing it down a lot of the time. You knew what he was going to do yeah, but yeah. he took he took 10 seconds longer than he should have yeah. um, and it allowed them to get back into their shape and yeah, I didn't really didn't really get it. It was And the, the crowd, as I say, were getting frustrated with it because of how long he was taking. Um, and yeah, I do think that responsibility levels of... And he's got to, if you're the captain of the football club, you're going to get that. You've come straight back into the side and we've been absolutely useless in the two games. You're gonna, as captain, you've got to take on that responsibility. Um, but let's not. Let's, yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't the only player. That was yeah. under par. Don't no, and he's been asked to do, as you say, he has, he has been asked to do a lot, mm. carrying the ball forward, looking for the pass. You know, that, I wouldn't say there was his strongest attributes by any means. No, true. So why is he being the one being asked to do that? Yeah, you know, it just feels like he feels like he has to because he's the captain. But mm. I don't know. I, I think our, our way of getting the ball up the pitch in that whole game wasn't great. No, I'd I'd much rather see, and whether this is because the players aren't doing it on the pitch or whether it's a coach thing, I'd much rather see a Lerma or a Lewis Cook yeah. go and get it off them. Fetch it, yeah. Go and get it off them. And then I even remember at the start of the Championship with Scott Park, Kilkenny used to do that. Yeah, yeah. And Sermon was great at it. He went well under the radar doing that. The centre-halves get it. And instead of just like looking up and seeing a ball, they give it to someone who's actually known to be better with the ball yeah, and yeah, let them agrees. do it. I mean, Sermon used to get the ball and just get you out wide and we're off. Yeah. And Lewis and Lerma are... are well capable of doing that. It gives your fullbacks a better chance it as does. well, doesn't it? Get to be honest, to get further up the pitch. Well, otherwise they're always waiting. And they're getting it back to go and just having to give it straight back. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, we eat each other, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> We're excited. But yeah, it was frustrating. I feel for Lloyd. It hasn't been a good, you know, getting back in the side. It hasn't been good for him. But um, he did. Let's, you know, he made a good block at nil nil. I yeah. think, and, and yeah. his pace does get him out of trouble. So, and maybe it is that whether it be Mepham or Sonesi or even Jack Stevens, to be fair their main concern is none of them are quick mm. and I think Lloyd gives us pace and I think I can understand why you would get him in the team but for me at the moment it, yeah he just hasn't we haven't looked right since he's been back yeah so players were missing then like Tavernier mm. obviously a huge miss I think also Neto as well Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to put any of the no. goals directly down to Travers but I don't know, it looked like he slightly retreated when he was going to come out for the corner and then he didn't. And just that dominance in the box, as we saw against Spurs at home, wasn't particularly good. I would like to, to, to have that experience of Neto back. But Tav just provides us like, with that out ball. Yeah. He's, he's one of the only players that's you know, like capable of really carrying the ball with any momentum. Uh, and we don't have that at the moment. And that, you know, it was rumoured that there was a training ground injury or something three months or so. We don't quite know the extent of that. But it's a hamstring injury either way. With him being out, Bournemouth have not been the same side. And obviously one of the protagonists who takes the blame is the manager. And at full time after the Palace game, I don't even think the vitriol towards Parker post-Liverpool was as bad and unanimous as what I've seen for Gary O'Neill after mm. Crystal Palace. Uh, I'd probably agree. Some of the, like, some of the, oh look, it's four points out of the last 24 or something like that. It's, yeah. it's not particularly good. I think it's heightened by the fact that a lot of fans pre his appointment were questioning his appointment as well. Yeah, and we've, we've talked about this before in that, you know, um, one of the reasons they cited for getting him in is that the fans wanted him because we clapped we clapped, we clapped him off thinking that was the last time we'd see him as our manager. Mm. And we wanted to pay respect to that because he steadied the ship, as we say. Mm. But um, yeah, I, I do think as well there is, a, there is a, there's a case to say that when you look at Twitter, certainly that's where I've seen a lot of it. <clears throat> get into a bit of an echo chain but you all start kind of repeating each other people are getting a little yeah. bit little bit carried away in my opinion because uh, at the end of the day 
Well, no matter how much we, we stamp our feet and shake our arms or whatever, he ain't going anywhere right now. You can't... Not right now, You no. know, Foley wouldn't do that, would he? Probably. Uh, I, I don't think he would anyway. Well, I don't know how what it would take. But. It seems that... Well, you say that, but then is it uh, Tony Cordasco? Yeah. Who is the podcaster for the Las Vegas Golden Knights or yeah. comments? He He's quite active on social media and he responded to one person on Twitter. I think it was like Cherry Aid or something like that who's saying that he has a short fuse mm. and he will act fast, hopefully, for you Cherries fans. Those were his words. He said, O'Neill will be fired if this continues. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, how long does he have? I mean, look, we're playing Manchester United like, like next. I felt I, I genuinely... I mean, that's a loss. Just, just, just my opinion. I genuinely think if we lose to Man United and then burn in the cup, he could be gone. Really? Uh, just because of the, the timing of it, of the window, mm. that, Bill, if it was February... He might get a, a few more games. I think because it's January, he's going to think, well, I want to get some players in. Is this manager going to be good enough? Do I want to back yeah. a manager with new players if I don't try? That's the problem. You see a lot in, uh, go just before January normally, managers, because you think, well, you're giving money to, to, to a manager. You've got to yeah. trust them 100%. So, but, but who knows? I mean, it's, it's difficult. I, I do. We can't speak on behalf of all, of all fans, obviously, but it does feel, like you say, Sam, that people are on a similar thing that Gary Neal seems quite nice, hence yeah. the hence the clapping. He steadied the ship. I think that's a phrase that's been used a lot because he did that. We've just lost 9-0. We've gone all over all of that and he, he's really good. And I think if he had gone during the break, everyone would have said, thank you, guys. And hopefully he stays as a coach. A bit Woodgate-ish, actually. Kind of hope you stay. But to to have all this talk of you know, Europe in five years and we're going to spend loads of money and we've got new owners and then give the job to someone who's never been a manager and he'd beat Everton... It, it, it felt weird, it did feel weird, and I think we're all backing him, and I hope he proves me wrong, but it hasn't surprised me. The way we've been playing in these few games back from the break, it hasn't surprised me. Um, you've had a little bit of a bounce, but it's it's weird because we've been burnt before. Mm. I think I was one definitely that understood, if we go all the way back to when Eddie went, I got why he gave it to Tyndall. He yeah. never, we've just lost our, our god in Eddie Howe. We were in a COVID season, quick turnaround, and he went, I don't want to change too much. We've been so successful. I'll give Tyndall a chance. Right? It didn't work. You've been burnt. You bring in Woodgate to help us out. You get, you've been burnt again. We can go all over this. So it really surprised me that we've done it again. Mm. And I, I honestly, we could, we could get rid of Gary Neal, Pep Guardiola say, I'll take the Bournemouth job. But if Sean Cooper went and won one nil, we'd probably give him the job. That's what frustrates me is I think yeah. there's no point. If, if we go and get rid of Gary Neal, Sean Cooper will get the job. Everything feels a little bit temporary to me. Mm. The, the more I think about it, the more I, it just feels very temporary. Very, this is this is a stopgap. Actually, even if if Gary keeps us up, we would look to get someone else. That's how I feel. Mm. Uh, Foley says he's got a bias for action, which is like I'll do something. If it doesn't work, I'll backtrack. I'll change it. But when I think about well, it's interesting. You talking about previous appointments, right? So when I might have said this before, but mm. when Tyndall got the job, we brought in Graham Jones to support him. Yeah, we did. You? Yeah. When Woodgate got the job quite amusingly we brought in Harry Redknapp we yep. brought in Joe Jordan yep. um, and then when um, Scott Scotty came in he brought in a whole team of, of coaches yeah. now what's happened Scott's left he took all his coaches with him pretty much yeah. we've appointed what we brought up our youth team coaches to help out yeah. and that's it and we oh. brought in one guy yeah, uh, who we still don't know how much of a role he's going to have. He's not even. Day. We haven't. No. He hasn't even got an assistant manager. Uh, he yeah, hasn't even got a number two. It sounds like there's not going to be that named role. There's not. Which, which makes me feel like why would you why would you adopt <clears throat> that as your as your structure your hierarchy for your management team for the football side when no other club in the country that I know of does that. No, it does, as, as, and that goes back to that doesn't feel long term, does it? It feels cheap. It feels cheap. Eighteen month contract. It feels get. cheap. It which which is against the whole philosophy that it doesn't yeah. feel like it's putting down a bedrock, does it? To build upon, it no. feels like at the moment our eyes are on the business side of things, and that's going to get sorted out. Someone has been entrusted with Neil Blake, I think, keeping the football side ticking over. But if that doesn't deliver, then mm. maybe we're looking at whole whole cell changes again. In terms of our identity, it, could you argue that Scott Parker had more of a footballing identity than what Gary O'Neill has? I think I think Scott Parker is a is a better football manager. I think Scott Parker's a yeah was a better manager than Jonathan Woodgate, Jason Tindall, and Gary O'Neill. I think he's a better football manager. He's not as personable. He's he's harder to warm to, um, and it's bloody dull. 
Do you um, think he could have got, you know, with this investment, um, he would be loving it, surely, because this is this is what he was crying out for. This is what he said publicly. That yeah. You, we're, but, it, but I don't think it would be the football that Foley, when he first came, he, he very much got the got the feeling that we wanted front foot football. Yeah, mm. yeah something, you know... And that's something, yeah, he would never if we kept, want to do If that. we had kept Oliver Parker off that night, we'd be dead and buried now anyway, in my yeah. opinion, because, you know, the, the kind of things he was saying to the players and that's never going to going to work. But yeah, from a footballing perspective, just, just because of the experience, for one, I mean, Tyndall, Woodgate and O'Neill haven't got as much experience as Scott Parker put together in terms of being a manager. Um, I was delighted Scott Scott went and still am. But if you're talking about an identity of football, Scott's had more time to, to, to develop one. He's been at a few clubs, just got another job, hasn't he? Um, over in Belgium but yeah Gary hasn't he hasn't had time to develop a, a footballing plan and pattern he hasn't had time to and he's learning on the job which is nothing against him he is learning on the job it's his first job but to have it in the Premier League with new massive owners yeah. is madness it does feel really odd Lampard got the job at Chelsea I remember which felt mad but that was when they had a transfer embargo for example yeah. no one gives you know you've got you the most inexperienced manager you could fight he's only He's only managed kind of a handful more Premier League games than me. Yeah. Really. <laughs> um, so it is it is strange and it does feel like, we said this when we had the, the Christmas kind of catch up, that it felt like it was just the timing of the Everton win. That's, that's yeah. why he got the job. Because that's the only win we've had in God knows how long. A lot of people have said as well that one of the things that, that may have been, I've read this on Twitter, is that he got appointed the night before players came back for training. Right, okay. So it's kind of like, right, we need to... We need to, they need to know what's going on. Tick tock, it's yeah. got to happen. Something's got to happen. Okay, so I suppose we need to talk about the American arrival then, mm. the American entourage. And I think you said it was a, it was either in a WhatsApp chat or a Twitter or somewhere that it, you know when they do interviews, it seems like they're everywhere all at once. They're yeah. on South Today, they're doing Sky Sports, they're doing ITV, they're doing the AFCB uh, coverage as well. And you know, there's a lot of it, and there's a lot of cliches there's a lot of sound bites that are designed to make AFC Bournemouth fans wet at the thought of having a new training ground a new stadium all mm. this kind of stuff but there's something and I've, I don't know what it is there's something I just feel a little bit uncomfortable about is that because I'm a Bournemouth fan and I'm, I'm used to not having things mm. so good or what but I just you know for instance I'm not sure I liked the we won't get relegated yeah. From Foley. That I thought was a little bit naive. It's almost like he doesn't really understand the size of the task that we can mm. all see. Yeah, no, I agree. I don't I don't think he can, I don't think he wants to. I think that's his mentality from, mm. from what I hear. Like everything is so positive. It's gonna go this way, it's gonna go this way, it's gonna go this way. There's not much about the challenges. It's it's all about, yeah, we can deal with that. You know, we raise more money than we need, so we'll deal with that. The players will get what they need, the coaches will get what they need, everyone's gonna get their job what they need. You know, I I am and I just can't, it can't be that smooth. It can't be that smooth. And, you know, he's, he's, put, in, he's put in his own kind of milestones and goalposts mm. in place, which is okay. You know, you, got, you want to do that, sure. But then you look, you sort of compare him to Max Demon, who never told us anything. Mm. Yeah. And so when anything ever happened, you went, oh, that's good, isn't it? Yeah. You know, but now what you're doing is you're creating this kind of sense of, you know, we've got to get everything. We've got to get it all. And yeah. oh, it's going to be a long, long road. I, I don't even know, like, if he appreciates how difficult it will be to make changes to, to where we are, to our stadium, or, mm. you know, it, now he's saying that maybe he can't make changes to the stadium, it's we too antiquated, to we yeah. might have to move. I don't think he realises how difficult, how many people over the years have looked into that and how how many different kind of roadblocks he's yeah. going to come up against. So, it seems to me that, like, it seems to me that positive press mm. is more pertinent than practicing what you preach on the pitch so yeah. I didn't mean to do all those P's but yeah. it, it feels like um, he's trying to get us excited isn't he yeah he's trying to get us excited but I, just, I it's so hard to be excited when you can see what's going on on the pitch but this is the problem it's so right? difficult because all the things he's talking about that he, he makes it feel like they're happening now mm. but let's be truthful these things won't happen for a year, yeah. two years, three years, four years, yeah. five years. What we see, like you say, is what's going on on the pitch. Yeah. So all these things he's talking about, all these amazing ideas. He's off to France on the 11th to watch, um, what's that team Lorient. called? Lorient. Lorient. Yeah. And, you know, because we're, we're going to be in a partnership with them. A, Multimedia, you know, what was it? Multi... Club strategy or whatever. Multi club strategy. Yeah. And he's you know, he's all about, you know, 
um, the training facilities mm. and then get the youth academy up to the greatest setting possible and because he wants to attract players because this is where players should want to play want to play on the yeah. south coast by the beach and you know I love it all I it's very long do, term isn't it it's, but not, it's very not long term yeah. Sports um, different though. Sports different in the it is. to what it is. Here. It's dog eat dog. It's unrelenting. It's it's kind of. I don't know if he gets. Do you think he gets it? I, I don't know. I think you know we'll, we'll find out. But I think all these things that he's talking about, we you kind of want to sit with him and go, that's great, and I love your positivity, and that's really really good. But we might not. We might go go down before that. Yeah. We 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 might go down. We might. So then what happens? But yeah, I I, I think we would. If he was coming out and going, oh, you know, it might take time. We might be able to get some players in the window. Everyone would go, oh, God, give us something. Mm. So, you know, you've yeah. got to be... My only... I think I've said this to you guys. The only thing that fills me with a little bit more confidence is that he has been involved in sport. I know it's off football, but he's been involved in sport. He's made a hell of a lot of money. You don't do that if you're stupid. So, you know, I, I don't think he's a... You know, he's, he's, he can't be too naive. He's made a lot of money and he's worked in sport. So that's positive. And look at the, the Golden Knights. And if you look at their journey and stuff, he... You know, he always did. There was proof in the pudding, you know. So we've we've got to be be positive about that. And maybe, weirdly, the Palace game that he obviously attended will be a little bit of a wake-up call for him to realise how big the task is. And it might, we might look back at this at the end and go, I'll tell you what, it's a good job we had that Palace game because then we pulled, you know, yeah. do you know what I mean? we pulled out of the bag. Um, and I think really, even though he didn't say much, I remember when we first got the Russians in, it was a bit like, ooh, a bit uh, scary. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit scary. We, we are a little Bournemouth and it is a little bit, a bit scary because it's the fear of the unknown. But... We'll find out very quickly in terms of January, you know, what will happen because um, he's promised signing, he's promised money. So let's see where we're at at the end of the month. He's promised to support people in their jobs, which is potentially a bit of a poison chalice for, for Neil Blake or Richard Hughes or maybe both of them in that if, if things don't get delivered. Yeah. Because it, it sounds to me like he's like, look, that's your job. I'm hands off of that. I'm going to be Go yeah. to France, getting that sorted. I'm going to be coming back, making sure that the training facility is on track. Be making sure that you're doing this on track. I think they're the people that are under the real pressure, there, really. Yeah, right I'd now. Agree. Yeah, I'd agree. I think if, if things aren't delivered in in the right way, um, especially after the January transfer window, then I just don't I just don't see that being something that's. T- and I think that's what goes back to the guy from Las Vegas has been saying. Yeah, yeah you he'll give people a chance, of course, yeah. but for how long? Yeah, is the question. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he said. He's anticipated, so we'll talk about the January mm. transfer window, which is now open and it slams shut at the end of the month, of course. And in one of his interviews, he said he's anticipating some interesting transactions. He uses that word a lot, by the way, transactions. He's yeah. such a businessman. Yeah. And he alludes to the fact that he's going to go for a mix of experience mm. and youth. Yep. Are there any players that are on your shopping list? Um, no, it's feasible. It's- well, it's, well, that's what's weird is I don't really know where we're shopping, if you like. No. I think before kind of the new owners come in and, and you realise you might have a bit more money to spend, I was kind of looking in, in the championship like we did a little bit. I think, I don't know, apologies if I pronounce it wrong, uh, Gia Keres at um, Coventry, yeah. he's had a couple of good seasons, only about 24, 25. Um, and he, he looks quite an exciting player. Um, so yeah, I was kind of looking down that route, but now I think we're getting linked to Juventus midfielders. So do you think we'll be signing a, a, a new netminder from the Las Vegas? Conference? Yeah, <laughs> I mean Weston McKenney. I don't know. He's obviously the Juventus midfielder that's linked. Who's a very very good player would be an unbelievable signing. But I don't know if that's a lazy link because he's American. Yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Maybe I, I've said a few times. I wonder if it might not be this window, but I wonder if you know when you're trying to promote a football club and obviously the Michael B Jordan thing, you go and get someone like for from like to try and tap into like the Asian market yeah. and that wouldn't surprise me yeah. uh, Arsenal have done it man you've done it you, you sign someone that's because that gets you a big fan base yeah, yeah. so it wouldn't surprise me if we tried to go go down that route but I can't think of players that come straight to head but I can't really think of players off the top of me there's a few I always look at the kind of Prem players that aren't maybe getting the minute so yeah. I don't know he's just started playing again but Aaron Van Bissaka at Man U yeah. there's a few players like that I was I was thinking about but I think I'd like, if, if, if I had to pick now, mm. I think I'd prefer us to be signing players, even if it's a short-term deal or a loan deal, who've been in the situation that we're in okay. before. That relegation yeah. scrap. And... If, that, if that really is what he wants this season, we, you know, that's where we should be putting it, really. Mm. And in terms of future signings, I, the summer window's better, isn't it, for buying, mm. getting young yeah. players and going forward like that. But either way, if we're going to get new players in, like a hustling nightclub like a pop world in Newcastle it's got to be one in one out and yeah. players have got to go yeah. so with that in mind Tom which of our current personnel do you think we may be seeing the back off which sounds a horrible way to put it but yeah. you know, they will be gone I'd be shocked if any of my condos are still here mm. um, come the end of the window and that's 
I don't think everyone would kind of go cheers, Emmy. Like, you always put, don't, gave your all when you're on the pitch. You just weren't quite to the level, maybe. And he's had that all out of his career. But well, yeah. He yeah, needs to go and play football. Um, Jamal Lowe, potentially. Even if these are only loans, it gets them off that 25 man squad. Um, Jack Stacey. I think Jack Stacey, Jamal Lowe, and uh, Emmy Marcondes are, are three that I think would, would probably go. I think it, there'll be interesting ones with people like Dembele, because he. I would want to keep him. I would have thought Gary yeah. would want to keep him. But he might go, if I'm not playing, because he, he said that before, didn't he? Which would make sense. I also think there's going to be interesting ones with, do you name Brooks in the 25-man yeah. squad? Because, you know, no, it's not, not his fault, but it's been pointless having yeah. him as... Yeah. Yeah. And Junior Stanislas as well. Yeah. Um, the mad thing is, I was thinking about it earlier when we were talking about different figures. If Stanislas was fit tomorrow, he'd get in the team. Yeah. And we've been doing that for five years. <laughs> we should have moved on by now, and that's no disrespect to Junior. Um, so yeah, there's a few there that I think will go. You could even maybe uh, make case for people like Pierce. So if we were to get say Western McKay, yeah. and obviously we don't know the Lerma situation as well. Jack Stevens, it looks like apparently we want to keep hold of him. Yeah. I don't really know why. But Saints also looking to they want to, call. but I think it's up to us yeah. because we've got the um, got him till the end of the season. Um, so yeah, there, there will have to, as you say, mate. There will have to be some going out the door before we bring anyone in because the squad's full unless they're under twenty one. But, Even um, Fredericks would be an interesting yeah. one. Like you know, he's he's been oh, out. I of the, we had him. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Him and him and Stanislas having a, a lovely time, yeah. probably waiting to try to get back on that pitch. I just don't see either of them making a making an impact now. No, we don't. but yeah, it would be interesting to see what route we go down um, in terms of players. I would like to see some some wingers. Yeah, I, I'd like to see some some players in them sort of areas that you feel can, whether it be assists or goals, but can add numbers to us because that's why. As we just mentioned, that's why Stanislas always gets back in the team. Yeah, because he delivers. You know, no disrespect, but your you, you Christie's and that they don't they don't give you enough output. I don't think. And with Tavernier out as well, I would like someone in that area. May I say Dan Juma? Yeah. Dan Juma. Well, do you know Who, what? by the way, shared on his Instagram the other day he was watching the Bournemouth game. Yeah, he's really pleased. Said in the athletic that he's got unfinished business in the Premier League. He's lo- you got to remember as well that Emery left. Yeah. You yeah. don't know if his his relationship with the new manager might not be the same so, as it was yeah. with Emery. So. I love Hardy Bowie. Well, he didn't get in the Dutch squad, did he? Because they, they don't Surprising. want out-and-out wingers. Oh. Surprising that uh, Dutch squad, though, yeah. We, we we do these shows, and quite quite often I find them quite uh, cathartic, and I feel usually quite better at the end of it. But this one, I, I don't. It's because there's so much unknown, I think, at the moment, in general. How long has O'Neill got? What, a couple of games, do you think? Yeah. I do think he is. And what does he need to do? I mean, ideally three points, but what, what does he need to do to make the fan base happier against Man United? Is it a case of just at least going toe-to-toe, even if we get back at 4-0, we just want to see us having a go? Or would you rather us be putting in a performance akin to the Chelsea game, which only sees a narrow defeat? What is it? Is it a performance you're looking for? Is it the points? What do we need? I think it's a, a plan is what I want to see. I don't really... We're going to man you away, who are on great form, by the way, typically. But it's it's thinking, I know what we're doing here. I kind of get it. Yeah. Um, if we were to say, you know, I, I don't expect us to go out there and just attack him and get picked off every time. But if we were to soak it up, but you thought, yeah, but what he's doing is he's playing some pace on the counter. Yeah. So we're trying to do that way. Then I'd get it. Eddie done that loads of times. You know, you just play on the counter attack. I remember the... Was it when we beat like, Chelsea 3-0 and Chelsea 4-0? Before the goal, it was all wet and they had all yeah, the ball. Yeah. But we offered that threat the other way. So I think it will be a plan. That, you see Jane Nancy on the left. Yeah, maybe. maybe. <laughs> it will just kind of be to know what we're doing. What he can't do in the next two games. Because let's be honest, the Burnley game is a cup game that I'm not really bothered about yeah. that much. Um, we're not going to win the cup. So if we were to lose both them games, it depends on the plan. And if we come out of them two games, we've had two shots on target, for example, yeah. then he's in, then he's going to be a problem. That, that's that's the thing, isn't it? I don't know if you agree, to but yeah, it's, no. it's to see what we're trying to do. It's improvement. It's, yeah. you know, we, we, you can, he can obviously see, we can obviously see the problems in the last two games. Yeah. If the same problems continue, then, then either the players aren't listening, the players aren't able to learn, or we're not very good at coaching them. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, that's as simple as that. And that's to say nothing away, you can put any opponent in front of you when when defending corners, yeah. it, we should be better. When defending free kicks, we should be better. And when getting the ball up the pitch, there should be more than one hoof it plan. Yeah, yeah. We do. it'll be it'll be yeah. I'll be really um, intrigued to see how we set up against Manu because they've got some defenders out, mm. and they'll probably have like for example Luke Shaw at centre half. Yeah. Like we've got to look at 
So I, I remember before the, before the game, this was fans as well, but before the Palace game, people would go, well, what do we do about Zaha? Which, I, as I mentioned, I think O'Neill thought about. Why aren't we going, they've got two, two players out suspended. Let's give them something to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. And I want us to do that against Maddy. I want us to go, right, they've got a full-back player to sell her off. Let's try and get at them. Um, rather than go, well, we need to worry about Rashford. We yeah. need to worry. Let's, let's try and impose ourselves because it is a bit of a free hit. We, no one's expecting to go there and get anything. So... So let's see, we have gone to Old Trafford and got points before. We have. Uh, Richard Jackson, uh, of course, you all know from the vlogs, he gave us something to perhaps be a little bit more optimistic on Twitter. He said, reasons to be cheerful in 2023. Number one, we have an owner prepared to spend money in January, which, if spent wisely, should make a big difference. Number two, Marcus Tavernier won't be out forever. Number three, Jay-Z and Jay Anthony are going to be stars for us in the future, as long as we tie them in to some uh, long-term contracts, mm-hmm. of course. And number four, arguably West Ham, Everton, Saints and Forest, albeit they did get a point yesterday, uh, face as big, if not bigger challenges than us in 2023. There we go. Yeah, she's still don't feel much better. Only has got to a Brentford, I reckon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's see how he gets on. But that, that's a good point. Uh, I think there are... A lot of teams struggling at the moment. We're not the only ones, and that's that's that is that is good that you think actually even the way we're playing now, I could still find three worse than mm. us. In, in my opinion, um, yeah. I do think there's some teams struggling, so that could be helpful. Having said that, Everton and Forest just got points against Chelsea and City, <laughs> yeah. so we'll see. And with in terms of the transfer window, and yeah. in terms of the uh, manager search, right? We we are shopping in quite a shallow pool. Yeah, of course. let's be honest, right? Yeah. We're not going to get Pep Guardiola to come down to Bournemouth, are we? So. I can understand Foley, actually, the more I think about it, being a little bit tentative. Don't go out and get your... Work out what's going on here first. Yeah. Work yeah. out where, where, where you need your help because you get the wrong guy in again. Yeah. And we're going to have a better deadline day than yeah. Shane Long, I yes. reckon. Yeah. That was, was that... Oh, do you remember that one? We had to do a live show because Shane Long signed. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully it'll be a bit more exciting. So at least that'll be something to get excited about. Transfer windows always are a little bit excited when you know you're uh, you're going to be a team that are trying to buy, not trying to keep hold of your mm. your top players. So yeah, let's, it's still things to be excited. Do about you know me. what? I didn't even consider until you said that that someone might bid for one of our players yeah. that yeah. we actually need to keep. Yeah, Lerm will be an interesting one. Yeah, because if anyone bid cash for him, well, can we afford to turn it down if he's not signing a new deal? Lerma, Dom. And, and, the, and our left-hand side. Yeah, they're, they're the ones, definitely. Mm. You've made me feel a hell of a lot better. Look, we're going to trust in the experts, and those are Foley's words in Blake and Hughes. Hopefully they deliver over January. Hopefully the boys deliver on the pitch as well. Look, we appreciate we've had a Christmas chill. We've been, we've been away for a week, but look, you've been able to absorb um, Chelsea and Palace, and we've had to... Just cogitate over how we've been feeling, but we've brought it to you by uh, the platform that is back of the net on this show, first show of the new year. And we're back to usual previews, vlogs and all the usual stuff, including fan cams as well. So we appreciate your support in passing the 9000 mark. Honestly, Mm. we really do appreciate it. And we have been away for a bit. And it's been so lovely to have some of the comments that we've seen as well about us as well. So, yeah, we really do appreciate them. But, yeah, we are back to it. We feel, we feel fully recharged. We hope the players are as well. And, Tom, mm. tomorrow, lovely trip to Manchester for the 10 millionth time for us this season. Why have we not got a place up there yet? It's unbelievable. We've been there a lot, haven't we, for, for different bits. So, But, yeah, actually, we've had... I remember going there at the end of last season because we, we went to Manchester when we played Blackburn, didn't we? We went yeah. out for another. I've had some good ones up there. So, yeah, who knows? I think um, sometimes it works out when they think, everyone thinks banker of the day, man, you, they're on good form, Bournemouth ain't. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? There's, there's less pressure on this one, I think. Um, so, yeah, still looking forward to it. Um, hopefully they don't leave any devices around that cause the game yeah. off and we'll be, we'll be absolutely fine. I've, oh, I'm not going to say I think we're going to get anything because I don't, but... Who knows? Who knows? Might have caused them a few problems. As I say, they've got a few uh, players out defensively. So I'm looking forward to the away day as always, mate. We're going to do an on-the-road preview tomorrow. Ooh. We're going to do a two-part vlog. So the first of which is going to contain our uh, our preview material that will be out, oh, I don't know, sometime in the afternoon. We're going to be on the road uploading it. So it's going to be out a few hours before kickoff if you want to build up to the game. And then, of course, keep your eyes peeled at full time and also on the day after for the match day vlog as well. It has been a pleasure. Happy New Year, Tiggs. Happy New Year to you too, mate. And Happy New Year to all of you out there in TV land. Uh, I agree. Happy New Year to all of you, unless you're ones that haven't clicked the like button. Click that now. Oh, Happy New Year. And, and subscribe. it's going to be a positive one, mate. Like, like Rich, Rich Jackson has done it then. We've got a positive year, mate. It's going to be a positive year. Come on, let's do it. Oh. Up the cherries. Up the cherries. See you soon.